Yeah. Is, are you missing performing though? Are you missing being in front of fans or? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think that's been the toughest part of everything is like just not being able to perform. Cause that's my favorite part of, you know, the whole sure. entire musical sphere is getting to be on stage and to perform the music. And there's nothing like, you know, seeing people's faces listening and, and getting to see their reaction and feel the energy with them. So that's been difficult, but. Um, I, I hope concerts come back soon, man. Oh, I know, same. Oh. It's tough. Has the uh, as your songwriting um, uh, been harder or has it been uh, easier, the fact that you've had more time at home? Uh, in some aspects, it, it really depends. Like from, well, for myself, like my solo songwriting at home has been a lot easier. Just um, I think, you know, shutting down and, and shutting out all the external stimulation for a long time. You'd think, you know, you'd lose creativity from that, but actually um it has inspired a lot of it and i've found you know myself a lot more i've been able to like dive deep and and you know with the quiet and stuff at home i've been able to kind of listen to myself and find what i've wanted so i've been doing a lot more writing on my own um in terms of writing with other people it's been a little bit difficult i was always yeah. used to co-writing um and a lot of people have been doing the uh the zoom writing sessions and i did my first one the other day and it's it's very difficult to do um it's interesting because you get to work with so many different people from all over the world when you get to do that but um it's just like the lag sometimes can make it very sure. difficult um sure. but no I've gotten, I've gotten to when the restrictions loosened up a bit in the summertime i was able to go in and write with some people um and uh yeah i'm just i've just been working away as i can i guess because i know as an artist you got to stay stimulated eh? it, it, it's it's almost it's like you have that hunger to just keep going so i imagine you, you find it you find a way right you have no choice exactly you have to it's the only way i just want to bring up your song water i find it, it it's amazing but it has such an anthemic vibe mm. when i hear it did you have uh, it's, I don't know if you did you have a group of people doing the backup vocals on that on that main hook or no no that was just me yeah we it was what? just yeah we did it so when I recorded it I recorded it with John Levine who produced and, and co-wrote the song and I was in LA and I was just at his studio in his backyard and um, he has this like kind of big room where he has the microphone set up. And so I went in and I recorded, you know, like the lead vocals and stuff. And then we were like, we want to layer this with like a big choir type thing. Yeah. So basically what you do is like you take the mic and you'll stand like maybe this close to it and sing like one of the backgrounds. And then you'll like back up a little bit and you'll do like a distances. And so like at one point I was like standing probably like at least like five feet away from the mic, just like chanting like all these things so you when you do it over and over and over again with different tones and layers and stuff it just creates this big sounding like almost like gospel choir so I've, I've done that for like all of my songs which is kind of cool to be able I'm to blown do. away I'm blown away you telling me that because I thought for sure it literally sounds like you have a choir of people <laughs> in a studio singing it yeah I know studio oh. magic in the modern day it's uh, that is amazing. I, I'm sure that happens on a lot of songs we just oh, yeah. don't know right that is yeah, totally yes that is so cool uh you got this christmas ep out mm -hmm. um what made you do that is that something you've always wanted to do or yeah i mean i think i always pictured like i've always loved holiday music and stuff and you know i, I grew up listening to like you know like even like josh groban's holiday um album and, and michael buble's and like mariah and just all these big singers and i think i always envisioned one day doing it and i always thought like oh yeah i can, I can definitely do that um and then last year we had um me and my team had decided we took a shot at like I, I wanted to do this like a, a cool kind of Christmas single and so um we put out Please Come Home for Christmas last year and uh then this year uh, everyone was talking about how much they loved it so they're like you have to do like a full EP and I'm like okay okay I'll do it and um I obviously um was very excited to do it but then like this whole pandemic happened and so then that was like oh no how are we going to do this but um it just it happened that we were able to put it together actually pretty quickly um, and, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm very excited and very happy with how it turned out and, um, the ability to be able to put that out, um, with all this happening. Cause you covered some, uh, some big artists too, like Bing Crosby, Wham and Mariah. How did you feel about yeah. doing a Mariah song? Was there pressure doing that? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, I think that's like probably like arguably one of her most iconic songs. Sure. And it's like number one every single year still. So it's, uh. Definitely, uh, it was a big, big kind of undertaking to take on. But no, I've, I've always loved that song. We kind of, we started out making, we were going to like make it our own and, and we were able to like go in and kind of do that creatively. And so um, definitely a big undertaking, but I was excited about it. And I'm excited with how it turned out. You remember when she sung it like make this? Make my wish come true. <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 
It's such a shame though because she has such a great voice and that yes. went viral yeah. everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I know. She really does. And that's that's I I feel for her. Like singers, it's just like you can't you can't be on every single night. So it's uh yeah. <laughs> it happens. It happens. Right. I'm I'm curious, what was Christmas like growing up for you? And and was it such a, a big deal in your family? Obviously, if you loved holiday music, you probably loved the holidays, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's it's Christmas has always been like the biggest holiday for my family. And it's always been like my favorite. Um, you know, growing up, I think we've always had like a pretty, you know, your typical Christmas. We we I grew up in a small town and we I live very close to all of my extended family as well. So we've always gotten together um every Christmas morning and every Christmas Eve. We have a little, you know, kind of party get together. Um we actually have this uh Christmas tradition that uh we all do. Every every New Year's Eve there's a, a Christmas elf named Peekaboo and he comes and gives all the kids pajamas to sleep in before Santa comes and leaves all the gifts under the tree. So that's a that's a really cool thing that I always looked forward to growing up. Um and yeah, we just we have Christmas Day together, we have dinner together and um just play music has always been a big thing. We've always had like holiday music just playing constantly in our house. So that's that's been a big part of it. Anybody else ta- talented uh any talented musicians in your family? as well that can kind of jam with you yeah absolutely so my grandma she plays gospel piano she actually inspired a lot of that kind of soul gospel sound you might hear in my music um when i was growing up she'd always play um and one song that we always always um every every time like we'll get together even if it's like summertime even if it's not even around christmas time there's we'll always play silent night like she'll always start playing the chords to it and then i sing it and we just sing this very drawn out like gospel version of silent night with me standing at the piano with her playing and um it's always great she's she's such a gifted player and she doesn't even she doesn't know how to read music she doesn't know how, like what the technicalities of it she just plays um yeah. just from wow. here just from knowing yeah that's incredible and speaking of christmas your favorite christmas movie of all time that you can just watch like over and over? Oh, probably, I oh, I love Home Alone 2. Yeah. Two? I, two, oh. the second one, the second one. I think that's one of the rare sequels that was almost better than the first movie. Like I love Home Alone 2 so much, so good, yeah. Nice. It was funny, in Canada, we cut out the Donald Trump scene. <laughs> they took it out. I didn't know that. <laughs> so, so when they're gonna air it again, I wonder what they're gonna do this year. So it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, it was so nice to chat with you. Congratulations uh, on all your success. We, we spoke to you last year, and I got to say, when you came in studio and you performed, I, I see growth in you. Oh, like, thank you, you so much. To, I don't know. There's just, you seem to, to be a little like, more comfortable even, and, and you seem to be in a really, really good place. So that's oh, nice to see. And I remember when you performed for us last year on our show, we got so many messages. You're, they were just blown away by your voice. Uh, you have uh, you have such an incredible uh, voice and talent. So nice to chat uh, with you. Thank you so much. That all means so much to me. Thanks, Vinny.